We have got a good old-fashioned pitcher's duel on the menu for tonight in MLB DFS. It is the Pirates and Padres. Mitch Keller taking on Blake Snell. And I think both sides of that game are delightful for DFS. We're going to break down why I like that game so much, which side of it I prefer, and get you ready for tonight's slate in MLB DFS. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire, here to break down Wednesday's 13-game main slate with locks set for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for tonight. The load weather note for rain on this slate is in Boston for the Red Sox and the Marlins. They look like they should be good to go, but we're checking back on that later to make sure the forecast has not gotten worse. Worse. Uh, the non-rain note for tonight is that there are two very warm games, both in Missouri. That's the Cardinals versus the Astros and the Guardians against the Royals. The Royals game has a first pitch temperature of 96 degrees, St. Louis 87. So upgrade both offenses, uh, the offenses in both those games as a result of how warm it is there. Temperatures, higher temperatures, good for batters. So upgrade bats for the Cardinals, Astros, Guardians, and Royals. We'll talk about one of those stacks potentially being enticing and things to watch later on. We're going to dive in, start things off by talking about that fun pitching matchup in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Our PGA DFS breakdown of the Rocket Mortgage Classic is now up over on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed, breaking down my favorite plays, Brandon Cadula's favorite plays, for this week at Detroit Golf Club, get that by subscribing to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. You can also find the solo shot over on the FanDuel YouTube page and over on FanDuel TV Plus for Amazon Fire, Apple TV, and Roku. Baseball season is in full swing, and there is no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So don't miss your chance to snag a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Refund issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Arizona. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 533-42. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700. Or in Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Massachusetts, gamblinghelplinema.org. Or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. In New York, one eight seven seven eight open wire text open Y, and in West Virginia, go to one eight hundred gambler dot net. Pitching preview for this Wednesday main slate: Blake Snell checks in with the highest salary on Fanduel. His salary is eleven thousand one hundred dollars, followed by Mitch Keller in that game at ten eight. Logan Webb facing the Blue Jays at 10 7 with Zach Eflin at 10 5. Kode Senga checks in at 10 3. Braxton Garrett coming off a massive game, $9,900. Lucas Giolito is at 98 with Aaron Nola at 96. Got Christian Javier facing the Cardinals at 94, followed by Drew Smiley, Logan Allen, JP Sears, and Kyle Gibson as the others at $8,000 or higher. Now, as mentioned, I love both sides of this matchup here between Blake Snell and Mitch Keller. And I think Keller can be a good pivot, but to me, the top guy tonight has to be Blake Snell. And typically that would make me uncomfortable because a chalky Blake Snell is usually not a good Blake Snell. And if you want to avoid him at high popularity for tonight, I totally get it. And that might be the right move. But my goodness, is Blake Snell locked in right now? Obviously, Snell had a bunch of weird starts earlier this spring, but the past month or so, his velocity has been up, and he's also throwing more changeups. And that changeup is a disgusting pitch. It has a 46.8% whiff rate, according to Baseball Savant. That's great for strikeouts. But it also gets ground balls and a lot of weak contact. And it's helped nullify the biggest issues Snell has had in his profile. Across his five-star sample, Snell has just a 25% hard hit rate allowed, 
His fly ball rate is 30%. And in the past, he's had dinger issues. It's been a massive issue. But because of those better batted ball numbers, he has allowed just one earned run across his past 31 innings. Disgusting. In those uh, past three starts for Snell, 12, 12, and 11 strikeouts. He has a 44% strikeout rate across the full five-star sample with more velo and more changeups. I don't know if this change will be permanent because hitters can adjust. Uh, they can make changes. And maybe the changeup won't be as effective when batters know what's coming. But it's working right now. And the Pirates, not a huge threat against lefties. We saw, again, Braxton Garrett mow through them last week. So I'm going to rank Snell highest. I don't blame you if you want to pivot, but I'll be there. I know it's the highest salary guy. He can be volatile, but to me, he's worth it for the upside for tonight. So Blake Snell, my number one pitcher for tonight in MLB DFS. Number two, though, will be Keller on the opposing side of this very same game. Let's talk through Keller's appeal right now. And I think he's the best pivot off of Blake Snell for tonight. Keller's definitely taking a step back from his crazy hot start to this year, but he's still pitching well. Keller's slider usage has gone back up across his past eight starts. And he has a 3.28 skill interactive ERA in that time with a 28% strikeout rate. Now, those are not Snell's numbers with a 44% strikeout rate, but it's still really good. And the bat of ball data for Keller is solid as well, which is the same as it was before. Now, Keller just doesn't have the same results as Snell. His ERA 4.20, he's led up four plus earned runs in four of those eight starts. And one of those starts was at home against the Yates. But we've also seen Keller show upside. He's had four really good starts in the same span as well. So he has upside. And if we're looking at a pivot off of the chalk, we want upside to keep up with that guy should he wind up doing well. The Padres are a very dangerous offense, but um, their WRC plus does go down to 98 against righties. They have a 23% strikeout rate on the active roster. They do draw a ton of walks, and that's the key drawback here. But I have Keller projected for 7.3 strikeouts, and that is behind Snell, but it's still a really big number. So I prefer Snell, but I will pivot to Keller if need be. If you're multi-entering, get both. I think both these guys are a lot of fun to me. So to me, the top two pitchers tonight, after considering a salary, after considering a stacks, et cetera, et cetera, are going to be facing off with each other. Blake Snell against Mitch Keller. That game is going to be an absolute delight to watch tonight. Beyond that game, looking for a value play. I did mention before that the weather in Kansas City is great for hitting, which means it's bad for pitching. Um, and that remains true. But there aren't a lot of good value options. So I think I'm going to wind up on Logan Allen. The other consideration was J.P. Sears, and J.P. Sears is in much better weather, very cold temperatures. But the Yankees are a lot better against lefties right now than they are against righties. So we're going to go to Logan Allen, despite the fact the weather is not great for pitching in Kansas City for tonight. The Royals, not a good team against lefties. They especially struggle with plate discipline, where they have a 25% strikeout rate with a 7% walk rate. That's always going to be good for an opposing pitcher to have a low walk rate, get deeper in games and stuff like that. Allen himself has been okay in the big leagues. He's up to an 11-start sample with a 3.68 ERA. The peripherals a bit lower than that. His strikeout rate is 23%, which is fine, but he does have room for some growth because he has a 12.2% swinging strike rate, which means that that strikeout rate could maybe go up a bit. We have not seen Allen face the Royals yet, so this is their first time seeing him. I think that's that's a plus as well. So personally, I don't adore this play. It's kind of just a value for the sake of having a value out there, but there is enough there to make him the top value. Uh, if you want to fully stack like, Mookie Betts, J.D. Martinez, all the fun Dodgers tonight. I think you could justify Logan Allen as opposed to going to Snell or Keller, where it is a bit tougher. But to me, I prefer to spend up a pitcher tonight because Snell and Keller have electric profiles and are definitely fun plays for tonight. So to me, Snell one, Keller two, Logan Allen, the top value. Let's talk about those Dodgers and go into stacks. They're facing Kyle Freeland for tonight, so we're going to want to be there, but I think the good thing with the Dodgers this time around is we don't need to sell our souls to get there because Freeland is a lefty. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's talk about the matchup here first. Freeland has had a rough year. He's made plenty of adjustments within this season to try to find his groove. And the most recent one hasn't quite worked. Been throwing fewer sliders his past six starts. And in that time, 5.90 skill interactive ERA with a 10% strikeout rate. I think we'll see Freeland pull the plug on this experiment pretty soon. So we want to look at the full season. And in that, in that time, he has a 4.54 ERA with a 5.12 expected ERA. He's 
He's letting up a lot of fly balls, uh, more than last year, actually. And his hard hit rate is 41%. So Freeland, even if he does go back to his previous approach, wasn't really there to begin with. So to me, I feel like we can still feel good stacking against him. The Dodgers, 117 WRC plus against lefties with a 223 ISO. It's a really rough spot. So we're back here once again for tonight. But again, with Freeland being a lefty, we get a lot of key value options here. Miguel Vargas' salary is $2,600. He has a 243 ISO against lefties this year. So Vargas did not play last night with Max Muncy being back. I'd expect him to play for today. And if he does, really good value, 26. If Johnny DeLuca plays, his salary is, I think, 26 or 28. Uh, DeLuca in the minors had both speed and power. He's 26 as well. So both him and Vargas are at $2,600. That's a positive for sure. So... It'll be tough to stack the Dodgers because you're probably not going to get Smith, Betts, all the the righties, Martinez in there. But it's not going to be as much of a nightmare to jam them in as it was uh, last night where we wanted to primarily get to the guys with salaries of $3,000 or higher. Tonight, we have some actual value plays who are okay for today. So the Dodgers, to me, still worth digging into even if we go with Snell and Keller as our top two pitchers of the night. The other high salaried stack we'll have to consider is a raise, and they're actually not as high salaried as you may think they are, given how good they've been this year, but they actually got some value plays in there. So let's talk about them. They're facing Zach Davies. I think Davies is a decent pitcher, but he's not pitching well right now, which is a key distinction. Davies has let up four plus earned runs in three consecutive games. Those games came against the Phillies, the Guardians, and the Giants. None of those teams are terrible against righties, but none of them are as good as the Rays either. Davies just letting up way too much hard contact in that time. And that's not typically an issue for Davies. So it is a bit surprising to see, but his hard hit rate for this season is up to 41%. When you get as few strikeouts as Davies does, that's a big issue to have a high hard hit rate allowed. The roof in Arizona will be closed. So that is a downgrade for the Rays, but still high elevation. That's a positive for batting. They have a 129 WRC plus against righties and their ISO is 195 while playing their home games in a worse park than Arizona with the roof closed. So I think we should stack them here with a good amount of confidence and behind the Rays, behind the Dodgers for tonight. As far as Davies with platoon splits, he's had reverse platoon splits previously where righties hit him harder than lefties. This year has been more traditional. So I think that means we can just go at our favorite guys here. Look at the overall numbers against righties. Maybe don't penalize the righties as much as you typically would because Davies may long-term go back to having reverse platoon splits. But I think overall, the Rays a fine play for today in my number two stack behind the Dodgers. I think the third stack kind of has to be the Rangers. They're facing Joey Wentz, who is letting up a lot of hard contact right now, and the Rangers crush lefties. So I think it makes a lot of sense to stack against Wentz here. Wentz has been throwing more curveballs his past eight outings. And it's helped him get more strikeouts because he had nine strikeouts in one game. But the trade-off has been a 51% hard hit rate. And that's led to a 7.36 ERA in this time, despite the increase in strikeouts. Wentz has let up five plus earned runs three separate times. He's had three games with multiple homers allowed as well. And the Rangers are definitely a team that can add to that total. They have a 136 WRC plus against lefties. They've got a lot of power. And a lot of their secondary batters hit lefties better than they hit righties. So I prefer to stack the Rangers against the lefty, even though it does mean we downgrade Corey Seager a little bit. Still in play, but downgrade him a little bit. Um, I think the net is a positive to get the other guys the platoon advantage here. So Josh Young, Mitch Garver got the night off last night. I'd expect it's because they knew they'd play today. So Young salary, $3,300. Garver, $3,000. Our guy, Ezekiel Duran, goes deep last night again. He's $2,800. Jonah Heim has had pretty good power numbers against lefties in the past. Uh, not as much this year, but it's a small sample. So still feel good about him having power here. So that's a nice relief because if we're going to go Snell and Keller, we got to dive into the mid-range on the Dodgers, down the mid-range on the Rangers, the Rays. I think all three of those teams have good mid-range plays and some value plays too, so we can stack those teams and still have our cake and eat it too at pitcher as well. Let's dive now into things to watch. I can understand being into Braxton Garrett for tonight. My strikeout projections do like him. His salary is $9,900, so a savings down from Keller and Snell. And he's coming off the best start of his career, the best start of a lot of guys' career. Two things kept me away from Garrett here. 
The first one is pitch count because he's probably going to go 85 or so tonight. The, the Marlins don't like to let him go super deep right now. And he showed he can still go nuts in that sample, but it is tougher to do so. Less margin for error. Second, second, the air, the Red Sox have a 21% strikeout rate against lefties, pretty low number. So it's not the best spot, spot in that regard either. So Garrett's not totally out of play. I do still have his strikeout projection pretty high, but that's why I'd rather fork over the salary for Snell and Keller tonight than save the salary and go down to Garrett is the low pitch count and the low strikeout rate. A lot of teams in this like going to full bullpen games. The Dodgers are doing that at Coors Field. The Blue Jays doing that against the Giants and the Red Sox doing that against the Marlins. The Royals kind of doing it with Austin Cox. I'd expect him to go 65, 60, somewhere in there. So kind of a full bullpen game. I do think we can stack the Rockies in moderation because it's the Rockies, uh, but facing the Dodgers bullpen, the Dodgers bullpen has not been a strength of theirs this year. I would say the bullpen games, that's the one that interests me most for stacking. Uh, I did see CJ Crone come back last night. So that's a boost for the Rockies offense makes them less terrible and Crone's salary is $3,200. So I think the Rockies are interesting for sure and uh, could get down there as far as a potential stack against this Dodgers bullpen, but just in general, beware of the bullpen games for tonight. Finally, a potential contrarian stack could be the Cardinals. They're facing Christian Javier, who seems off right now. I like Javier a lot in general, but doesn't seem to be fully on his game right now. His strikeout rate is way down recently. He walked five batters his last time out, and the weather is very hot in St. Louis. So I wouldn't go crazy here because it's a contrarian stack for a reason, but I do think the Cardinals will fly under the radar. And they do have upside given Javier struggles. So if you want to go a bit off the radar, I think the Cardinals are the first team I'd want to turn to there because of weather and Javier struggles. Let's finish up here with the dinger calls for today. The boring one I mentioned before that Austin Cox is starting for the Royals. Um, and he's a guy who does let up some fly balls and he's facing off of the guardians guardians on a team. I love stacking, but I do love Jose Ramirez results against lefties. Not great, but he has it for power this year. We know long-term Ramirez can hit lefties very well. So uh, great weather for hitting tonight in Kansas City. So we'll go Jose Ramirez as the boring home run call for today. For the fun one, I'm going to go Isak Paredes. I think I'm going to keep on doing him against righties until we give him more respect for the power he has against righties. His ISO around 240 against righties. I know he's regarded as being like this lefty basher, but Isak Paredes, I think he gets the job done. Facing off against Davies, again, who in the past has had some reverse platoon splits. So let's go with Jose Ramirez and Isak Paredes as our two home run calls for today. That's all we got for tonight in MLB DFS. As a reminder, if you want some PGA DFS thoughts, we talked about that with Brandon Gadula yesterday over on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast. We get that wherever you get your podcasts. Hit subscribe. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating. And also check out the solo shot and covering the spread on the FanDuel YouTube page and on FanDuel TV+. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes. J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to preview Thursday's slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.